welcome back. In the last video, we talked about compared the evidence for evolution, which included comparative embryology, comparative anatomy, biochemistry, biogeography, and paleontology, the evidences of those areas that supported evolution. Um, in this video, we're going to cover something quite similar, the next stop point, which is the following. Students will perform a first-hand investigation or gather information from secondary sources, including photographs, diagrams, models, to observe, analyze, and compare the structure of a range of vertebra forelimbs. Now, first that word vertebra or vertebrate, that is anything that has a backbone. Right? So a backbone is in quite a few animals, and anything that has a backbone or um, a spine in our case is a vertebrae. Now, what that word forelimb means, forelimbs is just kind of our, our arms. So we compare the arms of um, different vertebras. Right? So that's our mission or our task in this video. Um, if you remember from the last video, if you, if you watched that one, we talked about comparative anatomy and what that was. Comparative anatomy was just looking at similar features in living things, so looking at arms of different animals and seeing how they look, if they're similar or if they're different. So in this case, we're going to, we will look at the arms. Um, but there's one really important word that I didn't mention in the last video, and that word was a homologous feature. So homologous feature. And if you look at the arms, so if you look at the arms of different um, living things or different animals, and if you find that they're all quite similar, then you will have found that they have a homologous feature. So homologous feature is if you look at similarities in terms of arms, if you look at arms, if they're quite similar, then they, they are homologous feature. So if you look at arms from, for example, mammals, and you find that they're quite similar, that would be a homologous feature. So we will look at mammals, we will look at different ones. But first we want to go over what a normal bone looks like, what a normal arm, not a bone, what a normal arm looks like. So a human arm looks like this. We have our top bone, which is called the humerus. We have two forearms, bones, bones are forearms, which are called the radius and the ulna. And we have a wrist between our forearm and our fingers, and we have five fingers as well. And remember, if you watched the last video, we've got the pentadactyl, which means penta means five, and ductal kind of means finger. So we have the pentadactyl finger version, which means we have five fingers. So that is a normal human arm. It has a humerus, has a radius and ulna, has a wrist, and has these five fingers. But if we compare our arms to the arms of different mammals, which I'll do next, then we'll find we have quite a few similarities. So these ones here are your mammals. We've got humans. Humans belong in the area of the mammal. We've got the cat. We have the whale. And we have the bat. So some might be surprised and think, how's a whale and a bat, how are they mammals? Like, how's a whale which looks like a fish, not a fish? But remember, the definition of a whale or definition of a mammal was that they live, they lay life young, and whales don't lay eggs; they lay life young. So a whale is definitely a mammal, and so is a bat. A bat is not a bird; it's much more closely related to a rat than a bird. So both a bat and a whale are both mammals. And we look at the structure of their arms; we'll find some similarities. So first of all, here is their humerus in a human. That same humerus looks very similar in a cat. If you look at it in a whale, it looks a bit different, but it's still there. That is the humerus. And again, it's a lot thinner, but it's still there in a bat as well. So we all have that same humerus. Now, next part would be the ulna and the radius. That's right here for humans. Right there for cats. And right here for the whale. And right here for the bat, right? So all different mammals have that same ulna and radius as their forearms as well. So next would be the wrist. The wrist is here for the human, is here for the cat, and there for the whale, and right there for the bat, right? So each mammal has that same wrist. And then going into the five fingers, got five fingers for the human, five fingers for the cat, five fingers, even though the last one is here, but you can't see that, but it's right there. Five fingers for the whale, 
and also five fingers for the bat. So the bat is and the whale also are pentadactyl animals. They have five fingers. So you can see that mammals, which is obviously a class, have all have very similar structures. They all have homologous, homologous features in terms of their arms. So the arm is a homologous feature, which means their arm structure is very similar. Similar. <coughs> now next, we this was these were all mammals, but now we're going to compare different classes in their arms. So the rabbit that was a mammal so we've got here we've got rabbits which is the mammal we have a lizard which is a reptile goes belongs to the group of the reptiles we have a bird which obviously belongs to groups of birds um, we have this fish which we go into more detail in a second but is a fish as well and we have this frog which belongs to groups of amphibians now I already highlighted the two here which was um, two in yellow, that is your humors. You have that same humors in frogs, rabbits, here the lizard one, same one in birds, and this is the one in the fish. Um, next part was, was the radius and the ulna, the forearms. They're right here for the frog, they're right here for the rabbit, here for the lizard, here for the bird, and there for this mysterious fish. Next we had the wrist, change color, wrist here for the frog, here for the rabbit, there for the lizard, there for the bird, actually probably it's right here for the bird I think, and there for the this fish as well. And then the five fingers, remember that was called pentadactyl, we have five for the frog, you can't see that properly but the rabbit also has five. We have five for the lizard. I've got five for the bird. Again, you can't see him properly, but the bird also has five. And we have five for this mysterious fish. Um, so this, these were all pentas. Remember this word? I'll spell it out again. It's a really good word to know. Penta means five. Penta. Ductal. Ductal refers to fingers. So these are all pentadactyl animals. They have five fingers. Um, now, why is this important? Because now we've just realized that amphibians, mammals, reptiles, and birds and fish, even though they're all different classes, they all have very similar f um, forearms, four limbs, which is what we were looking at. So the syllabus dot point says, compare the structures of range of vertebra forelimbs. So they're overall, they're quite similar, even though, you know, you might have uh, some of the fingers being longer than in others. But overall, they're very similar. They all have the same features. Those features might have changed a bit, but overall, they're all there. Um, I still want to talk about this fish because if anyone watched the last video, we had that word come up. It was the crossopterian pterian fish, and that was a transitional form. Now, what is a transitional form? Transitional form is anything that is between two major groups or two major species um, or groups of species so we have this is a fish and 400 million years ago basically all life was in the ocean and this fish was one of the first fishes that could breathe oxygen and had these um, fins that had bones so that allowed them to walk on land so we believe that this fish this cross fish was the first uh, animal a bigger animal to leave the ocean and go onto land so we believe that all of these um, birds, lizards, reptiles, and frogs, they were all descendants of this cross fish. So it was the first fish, the first thing on land, more or less, that was an animal and could survive. And one of the evidence that we believe this to be true is that we look at their arms and the structure, and they all have those same features as the cross does, even though obviously there are some modifications now, they look a bit different, but overall the same structure, the same forearm, the same humerus is there, the same five fingers. So we believe that if these, all these classes have same homologous features, which kind of pinpoints at a shared ancestry. Right? So yeah, in this video, we were just talking about um, different vertebras. So all of these, the amphibian, the mammal, the reptile, the bird, the fish, all of these are backbone animals. So all have this, they all are vertebras that has a backbone and we talked about them in detail because we wanted to compare their forelimbs so their arm the structure of their arm and what we discovered is they're all quite similar in terms of structure and that kind of hints at a shared ancestry 
and we believe that shared ancestry to be the crossoptarian fish. Right? So remember that we're homolog homologous feature, that is if you have same kind of features coming up in different animal groups. Um, remember the crossoptarian that word, that name, because that's an important one to remember. Remember pentaductal, that's a good one as well to remember. And yeah, maybe comparative anatomy, which is one of the evidences used to support evolution, because we can compare the structure of different uh, anatomies of different animals. Anatomy refers to the bone structure, and we've discovered that the bone structure is quite similar for quite a few different animals, hinting at a shared ancestry.